Thank you so much. Okay, I'm going to let you do it. Oh, great, they'll be faster. I've got timber down in Georgia. Made lots of money. Landowners are not doing that. So, why are they screwing up? I want to know. Next slide. we got to go quick. Correct that he puts money in your pocket. She's just now learning what her grandmom and granddaddy did for her. And it was wonderful to take her out to the woods for the first time. Next slide. How old do you think these trees I'm showing you are? Anyone want to guess how old do you think these trees are in the last two slides? And these pictures are 21 years old. No fertilizer, no genetics. They're unimproved loblolly. These are CRP stands. The, uh, the first one you saw with the black girl, Sharon, that site index space 50 years is 80. Very poor site. Now this is a better site. I call this the park. Um, Joe right here, he really does a disability to the tree. I come up to here on him. He's huge. So get a load of that tree. It makes him look small. That tree is 21 years old. Next slide. How do you get to this point? Next slide. Thin early, thin often. Now keep a look on this stand. We're going to start seeing it and start seeing it. All right? Choose the best thinning method. Y'all ever seen this? Every third rub. All right, next one. Oh, by the way, while we're doing this, let's start passing this around. We'll start at this table. Y'all just pass it on through. And as we talk, look at them. All right, pick the right logger for what you want. I know every one of those guys has got caught belly. There's the logger, there's the timber buyer, and there's the happy landowner. All right, next slide. All right, ignore pulpwood prices. Yeah, look, pulpwood prices stay relatively flat. There's been some things that cause it to go up. But let me tell you a secret. In Georgia, I took $3 a ton down here. But I'm growing salt timber. When it got to 2004, my price was way above that price. So I don't care if I get $3 a ton. Then when the trees need it, regardless of the price. Next slide. Just want to show you what it's doing now. Next slide. Then when the trees need thinning, do not waste tree growth waiting for pulpwood prices to go up. The crowns are closed. The trees have nowhere to grow. You cannot grow diameter of a tree until the crown diameter reaches out. You've got to have that crown go out. These trees right here are the skinny ones that you're looking at on the small, the short one on the increment board. That's what you're looking at. It's those trees. Next slide. I love this lady. Her name is Miss Pearl Benbo. And her husband planted her 800 trees per acre. That was her granddaughter you saw earlier. Look at how ugly those trees look. This is her logger, Greg Tompkins. And see how spindly you can see the vines on them? Man, unimproved log lolly. Not even first generation. All right, next slide. Here's Joe and his daddy again. And this is what that stand looked like when we started, age 11. Now, this is a CRP tree, so remember that, CRP. Next slide. This is what it looked like inside of Joe and Lucian Stan. Crown closure, I always go by crown, live crown ratio. I want the tree to have at least, when it's this age, 35% live crown ratio. That means the part that has green needles at the top versus the total tree. All right, next slide. All right, I put this in here because a lot of people... You've got a mess to deal with. Believe it or not, Lando just bought this. These right here are planted four feet apart. They're third generation genetics. The natural trees you see are bigger. So you've got to look at what you're dealing with. And the natural generation is actually taller than the gen genetics because they're so close, or they're closed up. So you need to look at what you're dealing with. When you pick your thinning, when you pick your logging crews. When I met my timber in Georgia, <coughs> My timber buyer picks my crew. It's, it's nothing to do with price because I'm growing salt timber. I want the best loggers. So when you got a mess, you need even better loggers. Next one. You might have to go with whole tree chipping next time. Make sure, because it's a high production, they've got to put a lot of money to that company. You're looking at well over a million dollars of equipment. So make sure that you negotiate a price to take out the junk. You're selling the junk. If pulp wood is eight dollars a ton, you might have three dollar ton pulp wood because you want to get rid of the junk. Next slide. 
This is Dr. David Dickens, University of Georgia. We did research in one of the stands that I did. But you can get an idea, at, this stand's 10 years old, sign index very low. But you can get an idea of how skinny and small these trees are. We're doing total height with a pole. That's how short they were. Next slide. Now, I want to talk about thinning methods. Third row thinning, next. It's the most often done. How many have had, had your timber cut every third row? And nothing else. Guess what? There's no research out there. None. That's, it promotes diameter growth. If you look at the cores going around, the one that's short was thin four years ago every third row. You will not see promotion and growth. If you want to promote growth, you need to choose like every fifth row. Let's see what's next. I don't remember. Uh, it's most often, you know, it does not promote diameter growth. Next one. Oh, this is after the third row thin. And I'm, I'm short-armed, y'all. I'm not a big girl. Those trees are still packed in the row. You need to make sure that you're taking out enough. But here's the mathematical part. Think math. If you take out 33%, you've only got 66% to choose from. Not every tree is perfect. I call some trees mentally deficient. A little crooked, disease, the fork comes out, whatever. You need to go every fifth row, and then your logger needs to pick the creme of the creme to leave there and take your of your trees. Next. This is the core I'm passing around. And look, it was actually thin. You can't see, that's a little piece of bark, but you can't see any difference in growth. You can't see where the tree took off. All right, next one. Nowhere for the crowns to grow. If you don't have space for the crown to grow out, you are not going to grow diameter. Where do you make your money? Next slide. Um, let's go back to the next one. Oh, I believe your ugly trees. That always burns me up. You know, let the logger negotiate a price. Let them take your ugly canker trees. Next one. Um, compare this age 19 to the next one. All right, this is age 11. That's the same stand at age 16. You seeing a difference? All right, go to the next one. That's it at age 22. It's been thin three times. By the way, this man is not a midget. He's pretty good big. He's about six feet, six one. So that looks pretty good. How many have got 22 year old trees on a side index uh, dope and sand of 90 base 50 years? How many have got, y'all got salt timber growing? No fertilization, no herbicide. This is CRP, so there's probably a the little residual fertilizer left over. Remember, these first sites had to have three ton erosion. How would y'all, how many of y'all would like to see that on your property? Impressive. All right. Thin early, thin often, and pick your loggers. And it's not who you go to church with either. I don't care if he cusses like a sailor. If he's good, get him. All right. One, one of these sites I had to turn loose of because the, the, the lady so died and the man who bought it had it then by his friend in the church. And it was not pretty. All right. This, this is called Beth Stead. It's named after me. The landowner called me and said, Beth, I want you to be in charge of it. I told the logger he'd never done this. It was done on bids, but I got to be. I said, look, pick out the good tree and cut everything around it. I want the good tree. Now, that's age 13, and you're getting close to that 35% crown ratio that I like. Next one. That's the next year, person, people. I'm trying to stand in the exact same place. Can you go back? Uh, go back one. Compare that. Age 13. Next one. Let them grow. That's impressive, isn't it? But that's because I took out a lot of trees. I don't go by basal area. I don't go by trees per acre. I go by who's good and who needs to go. Next one. Just to show you slide, next one. That's the same stand. That's where it's been burned after the thinning. It looks sort of crowded to give, doesn't it? But it's, that's the same stand, age 14. Next one. All right. Let's go back to the uh, Miss Bimbo track. That's a few quay sand. That, the sand doesn't even grow good weeds, all right? This is age 80, uh, excuse me, age 22, site index 80. 
When the cores go around, next slide. That's him drilling the core for me that you see. Next one. That's the core going around the room. And what you can see is it slowed down. We had a thinning. Look at that. It regains, started to tighten, and we just had another thinning. You thin, and I didn't look at the core to make those decisions. I looked at the crown. When the trees get older, y'all, they're like us. They need more room to spread out. When they're young, you can have the crowns touch. When they get older, they touch. They're not growing at all. You need to have blue sky between them. Next one. Just to let you know that's not a fluke, I just said, walk, guy, and I'll take some photos. All right, next one. This is a, the stand is a side index. 90, base 50 years. They're 22 years old as well. And that's guy down there below. If you can see him, that little shadow down there. Yeah, that's a two and a half, three log tree. Go next. All right. <clears throat> Y'all aren't going to believe this. But I just decided to do without, without cost share. No cost share, just what the trees were doing. And I put in that the planting cost was $50 an acre. The seedlings were $18 a thousand. And the planting cost was $25. So actually that's a higher cost than what it actually was back then. I put property taxes at $3 an acre. That's higher than what it is. I put in herbicide release job, which is higher than what it was. And I put in the thinnings. And I said that the summer timber at age 26, hoping that it'll get to $35 a ton. Because we're getting back up there in South Carolina. We're getting some sales now with 31, 32. But it matters how pretty your stand looks like. If you only have a little salt timber, you're not going to get that high price. If your stand's 100% salt timber, that timber buyer's going to say, I want that stand. That's what you want to be growing. All right, next. So 22% return on investment. So look at this. This stand, we go back to, to um, David Dickens. Ups up, forward. <laughs> All right, next one. All right, I want you to look at that. Look at these lower limbs. People say, I'm not going to thin until the lower limbs drop. Does anyone understand why those lower limbs drop? They drop as the bowl of the tree grows out. It forces those lower limbs. Next slide. Watch those lower limbs. Next slide. Look at it. They're cleaning up. It's getting better and better. That's what you want. And that's a poor side index. That's below 80, base 50 years. Next slide. All right, next one. All right, here's, here's what my goal was. Because this is poor soil. I'm, not, I'm dealing with sand. I'm dealing with really bad sand. So I thought, well, if I can just grow something between 14 and 16 inches and put one log, you know, I could have, or one and a half, I could have 100 board feet per tree. What I've ended up with is I've got two and a half to three and a half, 14 and 15, 16 inch diameter trees out there. With no fertilizer, just through thinning, allow them to grow. So my last thinning, I'm leaving because it's poor soil. 85 trees, maybe a little less, depending on what they need. I don't thin according to basal area. I don't thin according to trees per acre. I let the logger look at the trees and say, you know, it needs more room. And all we do is pick the best and cut around it. Next one. If you've got old field conditions, just remember you've got to have uh, either a summer thinning or you've got to have it spray next. Next. A lot of this waste that crew spray, put blue dye in it so they'll know where they've been next. All right, can you cook? I'm single. Everybody asks me, you know, these men, they want to date me. Can you cook? My answer is, everybody can cook. Your real test is, will you eat it? All right, next. Every logger can log. All right? But it's the logging job you want. Next. Match your logger's talent and machinery to what you want. People don't do it. They look at price. They look at friendship. You've got to match the logger. Thank you. Next. Next. High price means more, they cut the larger wood. Next. Um, the wrong harvest can cut 10 to 15% off your return. Next. Time is money in the woods. This happened to one of the landowners I work with. High bid. Next. All right. Paper mill. 
Nellie Payne in South Carolina, this delivered, $24 a ton. Next. $24 a minus trucking cost, fuel insurance payment. Next. $24 minus equipment cost, maintenance payment insurance. Next. $24 minus salaries, insurance, et cetera, workman's cost, and a million dollars of general liability just to go to meal. So all that comes out of that $24 delivered. Next. The only cost not set is the landowners to pay, you know, how much the landowner gets. Next. The more you get, the less the lawyer gets next. The less they get, the less time they're going to be spending doing a good job. Next. Profits and capitalism should include the loggers as well as landowners. All right, next slide. Oh, the true goal is to grow 12,000 more feet per acre by, before, you know, by age 28. The quicker you can grow it, the more money you make and the less risk from tornadoes and hurricanes. If you manage, you can manage against every insect and disease, but you cannot manage against tornadoes and hurricanes. So you've got to get that stand out there quick. No fertilization, no nothing special, just do management. Next. All right. And then ride that chart until the price goes up because you're growing salt timber. Just ride that price. Next. All right. I'm gonna, this is the second thing. Go to the next slide real quick. What it shows... He's taking out that row, and you're looking at some of your best, most gorgeous trees going. So the further you space out that takeout row, the more those beautiful trees you leave. Plus, he's going bam, bam, bam. He puts the head down, and he's just going. That's where that $13 a ton comes from every third row. But you are not growing saw timber. You're going to be growing pulpwood, just like that, the course that I'm sending you around. Yeah. Oh, by the way, I knock the landowners out when we have a thinny. When they come to, they get a little money. But they're growing solid timber at age 22. All right. Any questions? You don't mark the timber on the second cutting. You don't know, prior to it. We did one time, and, you know, it turned out that I think the lot, that, that people are just not used to taking out that much in South Carolina. And I'm better off just talking to the logger that I handpick. I'm better off. I pick the good logger. You know, they're temperamental, they're, you know, crybabies, but he's good. So that's what I did.